glorious grace at the cross you called it finished grace wonderful grace grace wonderful grace at the cross all of my sin is
Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for this beautiful morning here in Kampala City. What a day God has made. And the scripture says we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want us to rejoice as we receive the ministry of God's word. And before I share from the word of God, I want us to pray and believe God that this is going to be a beautiful morning. God is going to bless your life. God is going to speak to you prophetically. God is going to inspire your life. And if you are weak, God shall renew your strength and if you came this morning or you're watching us from your house from wherever you are uh, via uh, our Facebook uh, page through the live stream via YouTube or uh, listening to other media platforms I want to pray that God's gonna bless you right there in your house in your sitting room or maybe you are viewing this in your cars you're traveling uh, wherever you are I'm sure God's gonna bless you let's pray then in the name of Jesus Father, I want to thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. And this is the day the Lord God you have made. We shall rejoice, Lord, and be glad in it. Father, I thank you that you change not. You are the sovereign God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And today your people all over the world have tuned in to receive this ministry of your word, Lord. I pray as I share in the midst of your word, you will accompany it by the accompanying signs, wonders, and mighty miracles in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray the sick shall be healed, the oppressed shall be delivered, the weak shall be made stronger, the poor shall be made rich through hearing the word of God in the name of Jesus the weak in faith they will have their faith revived in the name of Jesus for the scripture says in Romans 10 17 so then faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God so father I pray as I share the word those who have been down in their faith with fear with unbelief their faith will be stirred up and they receive the word of God in faith and in joy in the name of Jesus and those who are sick will be healed by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus I pray that Lord you open the eyes of the blind and scoop the ears of the deaf in the name of Jesus and there be anyone uh, going through infirmity sickness and disease through paralysis I pray the power of the living God the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will touch them through the waves Lord God on the social media and their lives will be totally and completely restored and healed by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, amen and amen. God richly and abundantly bless all of you that are viewing us right now from different places across the world. We know that today uh, this is the second uh, uh, service we are bringing the word of God here in Kampala City. Uh, like we said last time, we felt God in this due season, he has opened the door for us to come and have lift up Jesus Church in Kampala City. Praise God. And so we are wanting to send our greetings to all the viewers around the world. Those who are viewing me from USA, you are viewing me uh, from uh, Australia, you are viewing us from uh, uh, Asia, uh, you are viewing us from different parts of Africa, West Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, and uh, Central Africa, and South Africa, and you are viewing us uh, from uh, uh, and South America, different parts of the world, wherever you are viewing us from, I pray that God's going to bless you in this few minutes. We're going to bring the word of God to you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. Now, we continue to expound uh, the word of God on the series of increased dimensions of God's glory. And I spoke last time that God gave us a prophetic word when the year was beginning that uh, this is going to be a season. The church is coming into a season where God is bringing increased dimensions of God's glory, where we are going to experience, you know, the glory of God in such an intense manner, in such a mighty way, such as the world has never seen. And so we said, God's glory, what? What is God's glory? And we continue to expound that God's glory is that a part of God, is the being of God. The glory of God is the very being or the essence of God. Who God is, the essence of God, the very being, the very presence, the very power, the very nature 
of who God is. That is the most intimate part of God, His glory. And that's why the Bible says, God will not share His glory with any other thing, with any other man. That's why it says, my glory I will not share with any man. And so, because that's the most important part of God, of God's being. His very presence is very intimate part of Him and His face, His glory. And that is what we must all understand. When God says, I'm going to bring uh, increased dimensions of God's glory, that means we are about, about to experience uh, mighty, mighty manifestations of God's power, mighty manifestations of God's presence. Um, because glory can also be defined as uh, the visible manifestation of God's presence. Glory can be defined as a visible manifestation of God's presence. Hallelujah. And God's power. So the, the visible manifestation of His presence and power is what we call the Shekinah glory. Shekinah glory. The Shekinah glory, the very visible means breaks out from the, 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 the spiritual realm, from the, the heavenly realm into, uh, breaks the barriers through the natural realm and begin to manifest himself. So when God transcends the barriers of the, of, the, of the natural and is manifested or he appears, that's what we call the Shekinah glory. And there are many instances in the scriptures, as you remember, when God would break out and come into the natural scene and he would be experienced, he would be encountered. Men beheld the glimpse of his glory. You remember when God appeared in the form of a burning bush and, and, and he called Moses from a burning bush and Moses saw the fire burning, but the bush was not burning. It was a strange phenomenon that challenged Moses and he drew nigher to go and see what is this happening? How come that the fire, the fire is burning and the bush is not burning? And he drew nigher. And the voice came from a burning fire and he says, Moses, the place where you are standing, there is a holy ground, take off your sandals. And he removed the sandal and God had the conversation. God communed with Moses, God talked to Moses and God called Moses from such a, a mighty Shekinah glory. No wonder that we see Moses throughout the whole scriptures as a man that is a carrier of the manifest glory of God. And it's my prayer as we begin to bring this understanding as you are viewing me and hearing me wherever you are watching us from you will become a carrier of the manifest presence of God that this visitation of God's glory that is released today that's released in this season will not leave you behind but you will be put up you will be engulfed you will be closed up you'll be clad with this mighty Shekinah glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and also we said apart from the Shekinah Kind of glory, what you need to understand is the, uh, the doxa glory, which is uh, the, the nature of God. That is who God is, just a glorious God. He, he lives in heaven, but in such a kind of, of, of extreme great glory, that unspeakable, unexplained uh, uh, glory, and uh, that very awesome presence of God in the brightness, in the splendor, and the majesty of His built and holiness, in righteousness, extreme light of His glory, in that radiance that you cannot even compared to 10,000 sun put together and that is his his dwelling place the glory of God that's why it's called the the the, the Lord the, the Lord of glory the father of glory because he abides in that kind of intense mighty Shekinah uh, glory that greater doxa glory so the other word the, the other meaning of the word doxa uh, as I explained last time uh, it's a Hebrew word which means uh, an appearance doxa is an appearance that commands uh, uh, respect, an appearance that commands awe, an appearance that, you know, commands that honor, that once, you know, uh, you are 
clad in such a, a greater glory, there will be a command of awe and respect and honor. And by the way, when this comes to you as an individual and you begin to walk in this kind of a dimension of increased glory, you begin to receive a, such a level of progression in, 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 the, in the honor of God. In, you are glorified. You, 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 you command splendor in majesty. And I was explaining to people, uh, God begin to distinguish you then from the average people. God begin to distinguish you from every person around in your neighborhood, in your village, in your city, because of his greater glory. But also we see another word that the scripture is talking about is the white of glory. The scripture talks about the weight of glory. Now this is beyond all measure, excessive, surpassing, and all comparisons or calculations of a vast and a transcending glory and blessedness of God that you cannot even explain. So that's the weight of glory beyond measure, uh, beyond the... Uh, human uh, or logic understanding beyond human expression that the white of glory you can't even there is no mathematical word you can use there is no measurement you can apply there is no uh, language you can explain even you run short of the words and you run short of the language uh, to describe this the white of the glory of God and so when God tells us and promises us that this is going to be a season of increased dimensions of his greater glory we are very excited and I tell you the truth I believe with all my heart the world is yet to experience is about to experience such an incredible such an a mighty dimension of his greater glory such as the world has never seen. Praise God. And, uh, and because of that, we've been trying to bring understanding to people so that they can be able to understand what the glory of God is all about. So once you get to know this, uh, you are able to start pursuing uh, encounters uh, with such a greater glory of God. You desire to enter into increased realms, increased dimensions of, of his uh, greater glory. And uh, once you begin to function and operate and increase dimensions of God's glory, your life begins to go a complete uh, life and in your economic life. Now, we said if this kind of glory, if the glory of God is as powerful like this, if his glory is so powerful for us in such a, a manner, praise God, then it is worthy to pursue it. It is worthy for every man to pursue this. But before I read from the scriptures, I want us to talk about factors which can help us to walk in increased dimensions of God's glory. If the glory of God is so powerful like this, somebody would want to know how can I walk in this kind of a level of increased dimension of the glory of God. And that's why we look at a number of uh, different 15 factors that uh, can help us to walk in increased dimension of God's glory. So we are going to look into uh, uh, the word of God. I want us to turn to the uh, Second Corinthians. Uh, chapter number three. Uh, this has been a very important and defining scripture for us in understanding uh, about the glory of God. So let's read the word of God and we want to read from uh, um, we want to read the word from chapter number three. Chapter number three. We want to, um, to read from verse six. God who has made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the later, but of the spirit for the later kills, but the spirit gives life. Hallelujah. God has made us sufficient ministers of the gospel. When I read this, it struck me. Why? How, how has God made us to become sufficient, abled? Abled ministers of the new covenant, discharging, dispelling the glory, the power, radiating the, the, the glory of God, the brightness, the radiance of his power in this wicked generation. What makes us sufficient? Able ministers, 
complete, lacking nothing in him, is just because of the glory of God. That's why he says, he has made us sufficient ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Because the Holy Spirit, he is the spirit of glory that God has given to us, humanity, that God has given to the church to make his tabernacle, to make his abode in us. What a privilege. Glory to God. That God has released the spirit of glory to inhabit to dwell in your life, to abide, to dwell, to make his abode, to permanently have his residence on your inside. You cannot walk with the residence glory of God on your inside and you go through a life that, you know, is a disgrace, a life that is a reproach, a life that is shameful. No. Once this spirit of glory abides in you, he increases your level of value, your level of glory, and uh, he, he beautifies you. He, he makes, he, he makes you he, he beautiful. He glorifies you. He covers you with, with awesomeness, with beauty, with glory, with splendor, and with awe and with majesty that begin to give your life a different operational, uh, different operational levels or different capacities as you begin to function. Maybe as a husband, you begin to, uh, to, to, to be a, a husband uh, that gives your wife a certain dimension of, of, of honor and uh, you begin to become a great father, you begin to become a great businessman. If, if, even if you are a farmer, you, you, you begin to, to, uh, to, to, to excel in whatever career, in whatever profession God has put you, the glory of God begins to distinguish you and gives you capacities that you did not uh, have before. Remember I said that uh, the glory of God or uh, the, the glory of God empowers us uh, supernaturally to have capacities to have abilities that we didn't have before. That's why I've been teaching and another time I'll come to talk about the different glories. I talk about the glory of God. I talk about the glory of man. I talk about the glory of beasts or animals, the glory of birds, the glory of nature. Like we look at how beautiful this place is. Look at these flowers, how wonderful they look. Look at the trees. All these things, they have got their own beauty. They have got their own glory. So there is a glory of God. There is a glory of man. There's a glory of nature. Creation the um, uh, vegetation, trees, flowers. I see red flowers. I see uh, yellow flowers. I see, you know, different uh, beauty, different level of glory. And we shall next time talk about that. But right now, we want to concentrate on what he's talking about, the glory of God that is in man. Of course, the glory of God in a man is what gives the man's glory, is what, what makes the man uh, walk in his own glory, have, have his own glory, which we call the, the glory of man. Praise God, which we call the glory of man. And the glory of man is the potential, capacity, the hidden capacity, the hidden potential that is resident in a man. And that's what makes different people different. And that's what makes people unique. That's what makes uh, some people great. And that's what makes some people less uh, in greatness. Uh, it is the level of the glory they are walking in. It's the level of the revelation knowledge of the glory they are commanding. And so he says, we are made ministers of the covenant. We are made able, sufficient ministers of the new covenant because of the spirit of glory who abides and remains in us. But if the means of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, hallelujah, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his containers which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the spirit Hallelujah. How will the means of the spirit not be more glorious? Hallelujah. The ministry of the spirit shall be more glorious than the ministry of the letter, than the ministry of the law, which it happened in the days of Moses. So he's comparing the glory that Moses commanded and the glory that you and me are commanding today. By the way, you must, as you read and admire the life of Moses, you must begin to see yourself higher seven, uh, several times in the greatness of God's glory than even Moses. And that must, will help you to unlock 
your hidden capacities and your hidden potential. Because if, the, if Moses in the old covenant, the old dispensation could walk in such a greater glory that shook uh, humanity, that shook the whole mountain, that caused even animals not to come near closer to the foot of the Mount Sinai, that would cause the quaking and uh, trembling of the, of the stones and the rocks, uh, hallelujah, and the furnace of smoke uh, ascending up to the heavens and, and there is terror and awesomeness on Mount Sinai. How much more us who are walking in the revelation knowledge of the glory of Jesus, the King of glory, hallelujah, and the Lord of all glory, hallelujah, to choose to come and make his tabernacle, his residence on their inside. Do you simply understand what this means to your enablement, what this means to your life, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah, amen, glory to God. For if the means of condemnation had glory, then the means of righteousness exists much more in glory. By the way, hear me. The, the ministry of Mo, Moses lived in the dispensation of the ministry of condemnation because the law would condemn you to death. But he's saying now, in the new dispensation of the Holy Spirit, we are living in the time of the means of righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, the glory that is within, the glory of Jesus that is resident on your inside, makes you righteous, produces a fruit of righteousness, causing you to, start to be in a right standing with God. Praise God. You are no longer under any condemnation because the, the ministry of the Spirit is more glorious than the means of condemnation. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter number 8 and verses 1, there is therefore now no more condemnation. Glory to God. No more condemnation for all those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And I believe you are one of those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. There is therefore now. Now, no more condemnation to everyone that is in Christ Jesus, who no longer live according, ha <laughs> ha who no longer live according to the law of the, of, the, of the law of sin and death, but now they are living according to the new law of the spirit of life. Glory to God, which is in Christ Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Woo! No more condemnation from today. Hallelujah. No more condemnation if you, you are living in the ministry of the Spirit, in the dispensation of God's grace and the Spirit of glory is in you and that gives you freedom and liberty. There is no more condemnation. And I was teaching the other people at the time, what makes, what brings this condemning sentence? What causes people to feel condemned? There are many things that bring condemnation to humanity. It, number one is sin. So your, your heart condemns you and makes you feel guilty because of sin. Number two, uh, you are condemned to, to sickness and disease, a continuous perpetual torment and torture by sicknesses and disease. That's why the devil is using this condemnation uh, on, on humanity. He uses sin. He uses sickness and disease. The devil uses uh, uh, oppression by witchcraft and sorcery, all powers of darkness, tormenting and torturing your life. And number four, he uses death. Now, listen, in Christ, we who are already in Christ, there is no more condemnation. So there is no more condemning sentence on your life because the spirit of glory is now resident on your inside. You are delivered from the sin condemnation. Why? Because the spirit of glory who is in you convinces you and produces righteousness in your life. Your sins are forgiven. You are a righteous one of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. And if you desire, you can go with me and say, I am the righteous one of God. All my sins are forgiven and washed in the pool of the blood of the Lamb. I am no longer a sinner. Praise God. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am no longer a sinner. I am no longer condemned. I am no longer sickly. I am no longer oppressed. I am no longer, uh, come on, hallelujah. I'm, I'm no longer fearful. I'm no longer scared. I'm full of grace. I'm full of power. I'm full of joy. I'm full of life. Glory to God. No more condemnation and all those who are in Christ Jesus. 
Hallelujah. They no longer live according to the law of sin and death, but now they are living according to the law of the, of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And the same law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me new, has made me free. Praise God. Free from sin. Free from sickness. Free from fear. Free from condemning sentence. Free from inferiority complex. Free from, 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 from uh, uh, affliction. Free from anything that... You know, the enemy tried to put in your mind or put in your thought because the spirit of glory has made you free. The law of the spirit of life, who is the spirit of glory, has made you free from the law of sin and death. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> glory. You cannot walk in this revelation and the devil find access to start, you know, holding you in fear, in bondage, in captivity, and you feel like, oh my God, I'm not going to finish. I'm not going to make it. I'm not succeeding in life. I'm not making it in life. That is history. Praise God. You're going to make it and make it more gloriously in the name of Jesus Christ. You will make it in your marriage. You shall make it in your business. You will make it in your academics. You shall shall make it in your daily operations, in your career, in every situation, you shall make it gloriously well. In Jesus' name. And he says, for even that, that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. So now he's saying when you compare the glory that Moses walked in, the glory, the glory which excels, an excellent glory is only through Christ Jesus, praise God, who is the express image of the radiation of the Father, who is the express image of God's own glory. Christ Jesus, and he is the excellent glory that excels the glory that was manifest in the, in the means of condemnation or means of the letter or the law in the time of Moses. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if that glory was so glorious that men could not look at the face of Moses without a veil, how much glorious is this? Is, is the glory we are walking in today? The glory we are experiencing is mightier, is glorious, is a excellent glory. Hallelujah. It is beyond comparison. It, you can't even compare it. Glory to God. Uh, that's what uh, the Apostle Paul is trying to say here. Because what we have now remains. The glory of Moses was, you know, was, was a, a glory that was fading away. You know, uh, he came from the Mount Sinai shaming in the skin of his face, but that never stayed forever. But you see the glory which you receive through Jesus Christ is eternal glory. Is a glory that endures forever. Is a glory that is not going to depart from you. Is a glory that will continue radiating and shining actually from one degree of another to another to another and to another. In the name of just from glory to glory to glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And therefore, since we have such a hope, uh, we use great boldness of speech. And like Moses who put a veil. That's why today uh, we, we don't need to, co to cover ourselves. We come boldly. Uh, our boldness, you know, is just because we know that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of glory res is resident on the inside. We are bold against sin. We are bold against sickness. We are bold against poverty. We are bold against all failures that attack the human race. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our boldness is because of who dwells on the inside of us. Praise God. And that's why I declare to you somebody that is viewing me and watching me uh, from today. You will never again become a victim of circumstances in the name of Jesus. You will never become a victim of failure. You shall never be a victim of poverty. You shall never become a victim of premature death in the name of Jesus. Even though we are living in very troubled times and seasons like this of COVID-19, you're going to come out gloriously and you are no longer condemned, not even by COVID-19, but the spirit of life and the spirit of Christ will energize you and revitalize you to move victoriously in these times and in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, because of the glory that excels, glory to God. I can see God re-energizing you. I can see God invigorating your system. I can see God healing you right now. In the name of Jesus, maybe you are watching me from that 
that room and you have been afflicted and been tormented and the devil brought off fear in your heart, you feel you are not going to make it. I came to declare to you that the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of Christ, the spirit of glory who lives on the inside of you, touches you right now in the name of Jesus and brings you into excellent level of God's glory and heals your mortal body and revitalizes you and re-energizes you. I want to declare to you that the Lord is restoring your marriage. God is restoring your social life in the name of Jesus and you'll never and be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains until uh, uh, and, and lifted in the reading of the old covenant because the veil is taken away in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, like I said the other time in the old covenant, Moses, you know, went into the into the very presence of God for the days on Mount Sinai in such a furnace of fire, in such a, a glorious consuming fire, in such a greater smoke, in lightnings and thunderings and the earthquake of the entire mountain. Praise God. And the, the children of Israel could not even bear come closer to the foot of the mountain because they were so scared. Why were they scared of God? Because they still had a well, they could not behold the reality of this loving father. They could not behold the reality of this forgiving God. They could not behold the reality of a God who has brought mercy to humanity. A God who forgives man's sin. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. But as we are in Christ Jesus, the veil is torn away. We do not only look at God as a God of terror and fire and, and judgment who has come to finish the world. We look at a God of mercy. We look at a God of grace and the Bible says his mercy triumphs over judgment. Glory to God. And you are out there. Maybe you have been walking in a drunkenness. You are walking in immorality. You are walking in different you know, disciplines that make you feel you don't even like the way you are, you are living your life. Maybe you, are, you have been like as we see in Kampala streets here. Uh, some of the women selling their bodies around and you know in prostitution and other people in, 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 in drunkenness and some young men they are just tired of a life of addiction. You are addicted to so many things. Maybe you are addicted to, 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 to marijuana. You are addicted to cocaine. Maybe you are addicted to other drugs. Hallelujah. And you have no peace. You are addicted to all those kind of things that condemn your heart and do not make you free. And you don't know what to do. I come to tell you about a loving God. I come to speak to you about a God of mercy, hallelujah, because the veil has been torn. We don't look at God and as, a, as a terrifying God. We look at God as a loving God. That's what Christ came to do. Praise God. He came to break the veil. He came to tear off that veil that you behold the Father's love, that you behold the Father's mercy, that you behold the Father's grace. Hallelujah. And when you think about this kind of a loving God, you look at Jesus dying on the cross, uh, paying for all your sins, glory to God, and making sure that every stain of sin on your garments is all washed away by the precious blood which is shed on the cross at Calvary. May you receive mercy today. May you receive forgiveness of all your sins, somebody. May that guilt be taken away because Christ has come to remove that veil. I pray as you are watching right now, you receive complete and total forgiveness of all your sin, your addictions to drunkenness, your addiction to marijuana, to cocaine, to other drugs, your addiction to pornography, your addiction to certain behavior that you do not uh, like to do. You do them, but you know you have been taken as a slave, a uh, captive of sin. Christ has come to vindicate you, to liberate you, to set you totally free from that yoke of bondage. That's why this level of glory has come to bring a mass passion and freedom to all those who are captives and slaves to sin and slaves to sickness, slaves to death and slaves to poverty in the name of Jesus. That's why I've been preaching about this greater opportunity that the glory of God is bringing to the church, even to bring the church, bring believers into the covenant of abundance of wealthy and covenant of prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so uh, he, we continue to behold with unviled faces. And so as I come to, to the end, he says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
God is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is complete freedom and complete liberty. And I want to pronounce to you, somebody watching me right now, that God's freedom is coming to you wherever you are. That yoke is broken in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. The yoke of sickness that has afflicted you and tortured, tor tortured you and tormented you for many years, that yoke is broken. And I speak to you, somebody, in the name of Jesus. I know what I'm talking about because before I received the Lord Jesus Christ, I was a very, very perpetual sick man. I, I, among all my mother's children, I grew up very, very sickly person. I was so much uh, tormented uh, I, by the spirit of infirmity and I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I was struggling. Praise God. That's why I preach healing and I preach wonders and miracles because I know what it means to go through torture and torment by the spirit of sickness, diseases, and infirmity. I was a man that grew up with a lot of pain, with a lot of affliction, and that's why I preach the healing fire of God. That's why God has used me to bring so many people into freedom from the, from the sickness and bondages of sin in the name of Jesus Christ. Because when this glory touched my life, I became free. I was liberated. So I don't only speak what I had men speak, I speak the reality of a life of the glory of God that I have walked in. I speak the reality of the life of the glory of God that I have experienced. And I'm telling you, this same spirit of glory will set you free, will make you free in the mighty name of Jesus. I remember I kept telling a story. I, I remember uh, some few years when I, I was supposed to, some years back, I was supposed to, to be operated. I was, because, uh, you know, um, I, 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 the doctor says, oh, come on, you, you have got a uh, appendicitis you have a, a, a very serious problem of a of, of appendix. My appendix was almost bursting and uh, we walked into the doctor's room with my wife and and the doctor said you know what yeah, I can't recommend you. I, a week ahead, I was supposed to be flying to the U.S. He says, your appendix is so much inflamed, is inflamed and is in a, a sausage shape and is almost bursting anytime. I cannot recommend you to travel to America. Now I had already told the people and in America people were waiting for a man of God from Africa who God uses in signs and wonders and miracles and now here I was in a situation I'm supposed to cancel my, my trip. And we came into the room with my wife and we said let's pray about it. We prayed. We prayed. We, we believed God. And as I prayed and I, we believed God, God began to speak to us. And I remember telling my wife, there is no father who can let that happen to his son. My father cannot let me be in the plane and then my, my appendix just explode and burst in the, in the plane. I said, I, my father can't do that. You see, we must have a revelation of this father of glory. <laughs> so we must have a, a, the revelation of his mercy, care, and love as his children. Not only just a look, looking at a God who we don't relate with. So the faith came into our hearts. We knew for sure what the doctor said that I can be in a plane and my appendix will burst or I may be in a America, if you are not on insurance in America, it can be so dangerous if, we, if the appendix can uh, burst or get a problem when you are in America. And we believed God. And we went, so we passed through Kapala International Hospital, made a booking in for the operation. I went to America, and I remember the doctor says, uh, your problem needs an operation. You cannot, we can't do anything else apart from operating you. And so you'll have these tablets. And I was, in, I was there, I had taken eight years believing God for divine health. And I was in America uh, swallowing those tablets the first three days. And the fourth day, I said, Lord, in, in, in Marriott Hotel, one of the very expensive hotels in the US and I came down from the beautiful bed I laid down on the carpet you know those places are very beautiful and clean so I said Lord uh, I opened up my Bible and I said Lord this is what your word says you forgive us all our sins and heal our disease and this is the, what the doctor said and I choose to believe your word. I choose to believe your report. I am taking your word. I opened the Bible, the scripture. I read some scripture. said, Lord, it is you who said this. I am choosing to believe your word. I am not going even to swallow these tablets anymore. I'm believing you to heal me. And uh, I, 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 I continued to preach, and I felt the pain were leaving me without swallowing the tablets, so I didn't continue with them. Finished one week, came back in Kampala here, as my wife received me with a beautiful flower at Entebbe Airport. The first thing she announced, my husband 
we have already booked for you at Kampala International Hospital for an operation. Man, imagine coming back now and we are, uh, the following week we are supposed to have our uh, uh, annual World Revival Conference in Kabali Stadium. The nations and the world were coming to Kabali. I could not sleep the whole night. I'm wondering if tomorrow I do an operation, will I have been healed in a week's time to go and preach? Nations are coming to hear the oracle of God. Men are coming to hear me speak about the things of God. And so they were just, everybody would be excited to come and, and hear me speak about the things of God. And I told my wife, now if people come from all over the world, what will they say when they don't find me preaching in the conference? I was so disturbed. I was so challenged. I tell you, it was one of the long night. I remember I was battling in my spirit whether to take the operation. I, I was so tortured and to so tormented in my spirit by that operation. And by around the morning, around the 10, because the operation was to be at 3, uh, and uh, by around 10, I feel like it woke up like another day, but feeling the most ugly day of my life. It was shining, but I tell you, it was not shining in my heart. It was a different experience, a different feeling. I was like disconnected somehow from the reality of this life. And my wife was saying, my husband, you have to take this operation. Because the doctor said your appendix can bust any time. Now, I said, my wife, what if, if I do the operation, how will I travel to Kabali? The roads were not worked up on those days. And my wife said, we are going to get a plane and uh, you will go by plane to Rwanda. I said, but there is still about two hours to drive on the road from, uh, from the airport, Chigali. How am I going to go? And then the following day, will I stand and preach fire with boldness? Uh, I said, it's not going to work out. Praise God. I called Dr. Sinde and Dr. Sinde, he was a man of God, a man of faith. I said, I'm so troubled about this operation. And Dr. Sinde says, man, if you are not peaceful about it, I don't advise you to take operation because that means your heart is not at rest. And it may be a signal from the spirit. God is not giving you liberty to go on. So I advise you, first pray about it. I told my wife, I am canceling this operation. And now we walked up at three, we walked into the, into, uh, the doctor's uh, room at Kampala International Hospital. And he says, hey, you have come a bit earlier because we, we came around, that was around one, around one. You have come earlier than your, your scheduled time for the operation. I can see your time is at three. I said, doctor, yes, we have come. I want us to talk about this. I don't feel free to take this operation. So I've come, uh, I'm not going to be operated. And the doctor says, are you canceling the operation or you are postponing it? The devil is a liar because he wanted me to make a certain utterance. I said, as of now, I am canceling it. I didn't say postponement, but I said, I am canceling it. And I canceled the, and he brought the book and I signed and we canceled and we had to return to Kabali the following day. Glory to God to come and prepare for the conference. At that day, I preached in the conference. I never forget those who were in that conference. That was the most uh, year that we saw a lot of manifestation of the wrath of the powers of darkness. I remember, if you remember that was a year, the storm came almost blowing away uh, uh, the, the whole tent. Uh, electricity were wired and the tent pinnacle was almost catching fire. The devil was angry that what he intended did not happen. And that day I preached like a man who came from another planet. I preached with all the anger and the wrath of God against all those devils. And I tell you, they were never to be the same again. They will never rise up to fight me again. I crushed them, I destroyed them, I took authority in the name of Jesus. And anyway, to cut the story short, the conference ended powerfully with such a powerful uh, preaching. Every day I stood on the pulpit, I was exploding with the fire. 
and the boldness and the glory and the anointing and people are being healed. Miracles are happening because I knew I was speaking from a dimension of spiritual authority and power and very angry against the devils of sickness and disease. If he could torture me and try to bring me to the bed of oppression, what would he do to the other people? So I just took authority and we stood in faith with my wife. The conference was over and after that we went and did that. We went to Rwanda for a prayer and fasting. So I consecrated a fasting my, me and my wife. We went to Rwanda I uh, thank God the man of God arranged for us, went to a hotel and took a whole one week to pray and fast. And I was having nothing but the Bible. Praise God. The Bible reasoning God on the scriptures and his promises about healing. Internalizing, praying in the Holy Ghost. Every hours after hour. And Locking the supernatural power and locking the healing. The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter number, uh, chapter number 14, he who speaks in tongues, he does not speak to man. He speaks direct to God. And I began to make a direct engagement face to face with God. Hallelujah. Speaking to God face to face. Hallelujah. He said that the scripture says nobody understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries secrets and those which are those secrets and mysteries those are the promises of God that are not known to uh, into the natural they can only be revealed through the Holy Spirit so I began to download hours after hours we are praying the spirit with my mouth hours after hours and then we read the, the Bible says in verse 4 first Corinthians 14 verse 4 and the Bible says he who speaks in tongues he edifies himself he builds his himself praise God and we began to build my body by faith I began to build every part. I began to build my, my appendix in the name of Jesus by the word of faith, by the creative power of God. The same God who created every organ, the same God who created life and blood and bones and the, the cells, the red cells. I began to release that creative power of God in my own bodily organs and systems. Praise God. And on the fourth day, I was praying and the Lord, I began to hear God speaking to me. I have healed you. Wow, I, I told my wife, you know, God is speaking to me that he has healed me. At first it was almost difficult to believe that I'm healed, but the voice continued every time I prayed, I have healed you. I, I would go to pray, I have healed you. Now I began to change my prayer, praying only in tongues and giving thanks, magnifying God. Mam brodosos, rather as he called, thank you Lord. And I said, God, I, will, I promise you, I will tell the whole world, the moment you heal me from this infirmity, I will stand and tell the whole world that you are the mighty healer. And that's why even today, I take this platform and use this opportunity to let you know that Jesus Christ, our Lord, He is a mighty healer. He's a medicine man. There is no other God who heals like our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the mighty healer. His name is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Hallelujah. That's why in Exodus 15 verse 26 says, I am the Lord your God that heals thee. Praise God. And we believe. And after our seventh day were over, we went back on the car and drove from Rwanda at Chigali to Kabali and on, Man, on, on, on Tuesday we were the first person to go to make appointment with the, the same doctor, praise God and the doctor had also brought another expert, ex, expert in that area and we went into for scan, but here they were the report of what the doctor, this is an amazing story and my wife and I will never forget this, as we entered into the doctor's room, this is what the doctor after doing the scanning, he he says, man, I cannot see even any sign of appendicitis anywhere on you. You are like somebody who has never even had appendicitis. He says, it cannot be that you had appendix because even where your appendix is seated, it is so clean. There is no any residue where your appendix is seated. He turned to my wife. He says, mama, what, the, what, what are you feeding this man? Hallelujah. What are you feeding this man? Even where his appendix is seated, it is so clean. Glory to God. No more need for an operation. I tell you what, somebody, 
we walked out of the doctor's room like giants of faith, heroes of faith, going to the whole world and telling the world that Jesus Christ, he is Lord and he is a mighty healer and there is no other healer like Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And you are watching me right now from wherever you are. I want to tell you he is the same yesterday, today and forever. He did it for me. He will do it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a woman. You are, you are pregnant and you are feeling, oh my God, this time I may not bring forth the child. You are so scared. You are so terrified. I want to declare the power of his glory to rest over you, to touch your life right now and make you whole. And I prophesy that you shall go into that labor world and bring forth a healthy child and you'll come out very well and the child will be well and even you, you shall be well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because the Lord healeth thee. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 15 and verses 26. And never forget as Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and it healed all their diseases. From here in the city of Kampala, I send the word of God to where you are viewing us from. Might be in America, might be in UK, might be in Asia, might be in Australia, and let the same word of God bring complete and total healing on all your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus name and the Lord heal you also your family if you are at your, your marriage is in trouble you are at the verge of breaking it's at the verge of breaking I declare restoration and complete miracle and complete healing in Jesus mighty mighty name Praise God. As we are winding up our message, I want you to know that the Lord is working, bringing greater glory, such as you have never seen. This is a season to tap into increased dimension of God's glory. The, uh, the glory of God is available to help you walk into mysteries, into spiritual realities. Praise God. I was talking to somebody today. I said, you see, uh, the glory of God is a spiritual reality to be experienced. It's just not a good, nice word in the Bible. But God's glory is a spiritual truth, is a spiritual reality that you can tap in, that you can walk in from this day and your life begin to change around. You'll see incredible potential, incredible capacities beginning to explode out of you. And whatever you are doing in this dimension of God's glory, you shall excel in it. You'll be very prosperous. You'll be very successful in the mighty name of Jesus by the enabling power of the rest and spirit of glory that is in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and next time I want to bring the message about how then we can tap into this increased dimension of God's glory I'll begin next time to teach my message about the factors that bring or lead to walking in increased dimension of God's glory and now beloved I at our time is going I want us to pray. I want to, uh, I want to pray for you and I want to believe God for a supernatural encounter of your life. May this day be a day of encountering with the holy glory, with the holy glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember as I said, no man encountered the glory of God and their lives remind the same. Moses saw God in a, a burning bush. His life, his calling never was the same. He encountered the glory on Mount Sinai. He was never the same. His face began to shine and God revealed himself in such an incredible, greater dimensions of God's glory. Remember the story of Isaiah when he saw the whole temple flooded with the glory of God. The train of his temple filled the temple in Isaiah chapter number 6. God's glory filled the whole temple and the angels were shouting and, uh, and, and uh, shouting all over says the glory of God, the knowledge of his glory will cover the whole earth. This is coming to pass. The glory of God, the knowledge of his glory is going to fill the whole earth, including you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He, throughout the Old Testament, New Testament, no man encountered God's glory, and their lives were the same again. The apostles in the upper room, they met the glory of God in the appearance of, of tongues of fire, and from there they came out as miracle workers. Same timid boys, same boys that were afraid and so scared and hiding themselves, they were boldly transformed. They were completely changed and walked out of the upper room as miracle workers. I cannot finish to give an account of how mighty miracles Peter and the apostles did 
but the entire book of our account of, of acts is an account of incredible miracles saints and wonders that men walked in having encountered and experienced the glimpse of god's glory and now this is a beginning of a new era it's a beginning of a new season in your life Get ready for exponential increase of everything, your finances, wisdom, knowledge, your creativity, your innovations, your capacity to walk in, uh, you know, in the promises of God has come in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I want to thank you. I pray for this church as we move on from this day. Kampala City, you will never be the same again. The glory of God comes upon you powerfully and mightily in the name of Jesus. We cover all your hills, Kampala, with this incredible glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall be a city of prosperity, a city of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. In Kampala, I declare to you from this day, the glory of God is risen over you in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to you, Kampala, rise and shine because the glory of God is risen over you in the mighty name of Jesus. And the work of God upon you shall call you to expand and grow and grow in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the business of the men of God here in Kampala to continue to be blessed, to expand by the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak life to every child of God that has chosen to walk in the fear of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the Bible declares that Lord, there shall be a distinction between those that serve you and those who do not serve you. So I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus for the church here in Kampala to be clad with the glory of God, to be clothed with such a mantle of supernatural glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus, spiritually, socially, materially, financially, economically, and every aspect of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And those that have been tormented and afflicted with the disease, sickness, and infirmity as I wind up this ministry, I command complete and total healing miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare the spirit of glory to be a hedge of fire upon their lives to preserve them to protect them and to keep them from any calamity in the name of Jesus Christ and the word of God declares in Psalm 91 no evil and no calamity shall come into your dwelling place in the name of the Father the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and forever Amen God richly and abundantly bless you. We love you and we'll be again here. Come wait for this series. We want to bring to you about the factors of walking in the knowledge of God. The 15 factors how to tap into increased dimensions of God's glory. See you then. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. You can now follow us at Lift Up Jesus Global Ministries on our social media platforms. That is Facebook and YouTube. And don't forget to like subscribe and comment to get the notifications whenever we are live